Hey everyone, this is Adam from A Bentley Music, and this is my drum mixing and signal processing tutorial. Here I'm using the Get Good Drums, the Matt Halpern signature pack to be specific, and I must say these samples sound incredible just right out of the box. And I figured this would be a good way to not only just show what these samples can do, but also just show people that are interested in mixing drums in the box or just uh, making the most out of their samples to see how the process is. At least from my end, there is lots of different approaches and I've heard drastically different mixes that are all incredible and I'm sure they have their own sort of approach to doing things. But yeah, I hope you guys can gather something from this and I hope it's helpful. So I figured I could just start off by playing the isolated drums from the mix that you just heard at the beginning of the video. It's actually a song titled Dazed off an album I just recently released. So I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, here's the drums. So you get the idea. Um, yeah, so that's my process mix with the, the Get Good drum samples. Honestly, it doesn't take that much to get really far with these samples because they are really hard hitting. They just sound really great. The drums are tuned so well. And uh, yeah, I know you guys could easily achieve something in that direction if that's the way you want to go at least. Here below this uh, track is the MIDI roll printed out of that same exact segment. And I loaded up just the uh, blank contact just with my like routing preset just so we can start from the ground up, the raw samples, and I can just uh, show some of my approaches. So the way I do it is just get the Superior Drummer preset because I'm used to programming with Superior. And I saw I just got used to the way the MIDI roll is uh, oriented, you know. And yeah, once I did that, I just uh, went to the individual pieces and just routed right below the mic to the little stereo bus on this uh, contact mixer here. And I just split it into five, so it's, uh, and I named them out here, kick, snare, tom, spots, ambience. Spots meaning just all the cymbal close mics. You have your splash, your ride, your, your spock, stuff like that. And then ambience is just all the rooms, so like even with the kick overhead, kick room, snare room, all that. I'll just load it up to the ambience so you just get one big room track. Some people like to split it even further than that, but I like to just get my levels in the contact mixer itself and then I'm pretty confident with, with what comes out to the DAW. The first thing I like to do is make a bus for these guys. Just call it drum kit. And something I like to set up right away is two auxes. They're called effects in Studio One. But Ox. Uh, so one is parallel compression and the other reverb. So I wanted to talk about velocities with MIDI as far as programming the drums go and uh, I feel like it can easily be super robotic sounding if you're not too careful. In this case they're um, multi-sampled drums meaning that a different velocity uh, will trigger a different sample which is really helpful when programming like this. And it's really good to make sure that your velocities do vary, even when you have a multi-sampling plugin, if you want to make it as natural as possible. If you're doing a genre where you're just trying to be super inhuman and crazy, just go for it and make it the same velocity. Don't worry about that. But uh, usually the goal with this stuff is to make it convincing and natural. And so I spend a little time humanizing it. You can use a humanized function in your DAW, or you can uh, kind of just go in there and lower it yourself. But it's really uh, your preference to your workflow. So be sure to vary those velocities like as much as you can. It can be time consuming, but it's definitely a rewarding thing to be able to convince someone that it's not actually a person playing the drums. Here is the, the raw sounds with the same exact uh, drum performance. I personally think the drums sound great as it is, and for certain styles, that's like awesome. You wouldn't even need to do anything at all. But for the direction I'm going, we're going to do a little bit of tweaks here and there. So I started setting up this parallel compressor, as you can see. 
and I'll just explain. I have the Fab Filter Pro C set pretty hard, high ratio, fastest attack, fastest release, pretty low threshold. I want it to get hit really hard. And uh, yeah, I just don't want any attacks really coming through. The whole point of parallel compression to me is to have a uh, just really energized sort of room sound in a way. It, it kind of pumps, it sounds kind of strange on its own, but if you blend it into those original mics, it really adds a lot of life and a lot of energy to the uh, just mix overall. And then I put a limiter in front of it, which I'll explain uh, as I start sending things to it, but I know it's unorthodox, but you'll see the whole point. And uh, for the reverb, I like to use True Verb, personally, by Waves. Any reverb will do. It's just a room sound, basically, that I just kind of fiddled around with. So yeah, there's that. I'll just leave that. Everything's bust. So once that's all good and going, the balance seems good. I already did some balancing in the contact mix mixer. The next step for me is to just get into the individual tracks and just do a little bit of processing that way. When approaching the kick, I first like to tackle it with some compression. So I'm gonna find, there we go, the Metric Halo. Great compressor, great channel strip in general, by the way. I highly recommend it. You get a really aggressive compression sound with it, especially on the drums, it's terrific. So I'm gonna set that threshold until we get a decent amount of gain reduction. And uh, get that attack a little bit slower. I really like to hear that attack come through a lot, so a slow attack is highly recommended for that. Uh, quicker release, because I like to feel like kind of breathe a little. When the compressor lets go, you really feel the tail end of it come out. Whereas if it was a slower release, it would really uh, choke that drum up. It's already really focused and punchy, but not like choked. I'm so I'm really into it. Low ratio too. Don't really need to set the ratio too high. Onto the EQ for it. I'm gonna use the Fab Filter EQ, the Pro Q. Also great plugins, great company. So, uh, really two main things with the kick for me at least. I just keep it simple. Just get a little bit of high end out of there, out of the beater, and then uh, just find that fundamental frequency. It's usually about 60 hertz, but let's just find it. And then just for the high end stuff, it really depends on your, that's all a preference thing really. Just find a general area. I like to use um, wider bandwidths when I do that so it doesn't sound so pointy. But here we go. Cool, already sounding great. I'll move on to the snare drum now. So my approach to compression with the snare drum is very similar. That's why I just dropped the same one in there. I'm going to tweak it a little. But uh, yeah, I like to really slam it and uh, get that slow attack and fast release just for the same reasons as with the kick. I really want that tail end to come alive and not be choked so much with a slow release. So let's set the ratio a little bit higher. And let's mess with it a little bit. Already a solid transformation there. So with the EQ, uh, same sort of fundamental thing. I just make two big moves and then depending on the snare drum, if there's more to do then or like if there's a ring I don't like, I'll definitely just fish for it with a narrow, narrow cue, you know, just like kind of find it like that. But in this case, the snare drum's tuned great. I really like it. 
So I'm just going to really accentuate that body now and just find a nice place up here that gives it a little bit of a smack and sizzle. So here, let's find it. Cool, we seem to struck that fundamental. So again, I really like the, the wider bandwidths with the high stuff for the same reason. I don't like really pointy sounding drums. I feel it just seems a lot more natural to do it this way. So I'm going to loop this here, just so we can keep cycling through that. So, now that we got that all done, I'm going to go to this ambience, actually. I like to throw just a little compression in there. Nothing too crazy. Just something to kind of glue it together. The, it comes out very dynamic, which can be great, but I like to kind of just close it up a little bit and tame it just so the snare isn't like shooting way out dynamically as is compared to like the cymbals and whatnot. So I'll let like a little attack in so it's not completely uh, smashed. don't need a high ratio for that to be honest and then uh, I like the softer knee in this case I want it to sound as natural as possible especially if it's like ambience mics and not something radical like parallel compression so we'll just stick with that for now toms let's find a spot to loop for the toms actually there is a drum solo which would be great for that Toms sound great already. I'm not really going to do that much to them, to be honest. I'll do a little EQ, because just to take a little bit of that mid-range out. But, um, yeah, they, in this case, they're tuned great. I would get a little more uh, notch EQ, like get really narrow with it and take stuff out. If it was like home studio, drum kit, maybe not tuned so great, old heads, whatever the reason may be. So, anyways, let's just take out some of this stuff. attack in there I like really uh, really attacky toms like they're being hit like inhumanly hard drastic with that. The fab filter likes to be generous. Okay. In a way it'll it'll cut through the mix more in general, especially with all this other stuff stacked on top of it. I would say the next thing I would do is the uh, a little bit of drum kit, like bus compression. So let's see. There's a lot of different options, and even just a very basic compressor will do, but I personally like the 2500 a lot. Just You get a lot of punch out of it, and that's just a tried and true plug-in.
yeah, I already feel it starting to glue together. It's a little bit punchier. And just, it's subtle, but all these little things add up to make it sound good. If only it was just one big thing you could do. But as you discover new, like, little subtle changes, it slowly builds up to something. So the next thing I'm going to go to, uh, basically my approach, by the way, is uh, as far as what order I do what, it's just whatever I'm hearing, at, like, while I was doing my last stage of processing. And in this case, I was noticing that the ambience had a lot of out of low end activity, like a mid-range that could potentially cloud up the mix. So I'm going to assess that, take an EQ and shelf or, or low cut, high pass, whatever you want to call it, uh, just until it sounds right. In rock, I tend not to overdo it. Maybe 200 is the limit for me, personally. Uh, do it to taste. In metal, I, I go higher just because you really want that, that clear, like lower, like 500 and below, it just needs to be as clear as possible. So getting this out of the way will really benefit the mix. Already sounds a lot tighter. So moving on from that, it's time to send things to parallel compression. I'm sure some people do it in different orders. And uh, that's like, it's the whole point, right? People like to do it in their own way. And I personally like to process the individual tracks before I get into sending things to Oxus. Some people do the reverse. So it's whatever you feel like doing, honestly. So now that we got that sent, by the way, this DAW, um, it defaults to minus six when you send to an aux. I know some DAWs do it differently. Maybe it's unity gain, zero, or negative infinity, and you just slowly add it in. But there's no right or wrong. I like that it's minus six because it's like not too much, but then uh, it's a good starting point so you can start to mess with it, basically. So here's without the send to parallel compression. And here's with. So as you can see, it adds a lot of energy and life to it, which will be, you'll really notice it in the mix too. It just really drives and competes with the other instruments trying to be just as massive. So, and with the limiter, just real quick, I just like to have the snare uh, hit it so that you just basically have everything be the same level when you're compressing, when it hits that uh, compressor right here. So I don't like to have a parallel compression bus be dynamic. I don't like to worry about that. I wanna just have something really smash and energized and I can just blend that in without having all this extra attack and I'll be like where is that coming from so and I personally like to have a pretty high level of it so I figured now I would mention why I have a, uh, a full mix of this song that we're working on in here and it's also the same reason why I tend to keep some sort of reference song in my sessions when I mix just so I can have a sense of what reality is as far as frequency response what's too much high end what's too much low end your ears can really get carried away and get used to something but it doesn't imply that this will translate well to other sound systems or to other people really so you just got to make sure that you're not going adrift and like losing your sense of musical reality for lack of a better term so uh, here, I'll go ahead and play the full mix. So when we go back to the drums we've been working on, it is uh, quite dark in comparison. So that's something to know before you go any further. For me, I'd personally just uh, go to the drum bus itself and do a little high shelving. I'll go with six. I don't, about six K should be fine. So now I figured I would send things to the reverb and see how that mixes with everything. Cool. 
starting to sound big, but I feel like the reverb's a little muddy, but I do like the overall sound. So I'm just gonna do a, a little low shelf and get rid of some of that muddiness. Everything's starting to really come together. From here on out, it's really just experimenting, making uh, little decisions that would make the drums go from sounding great to ridiculous. And that's the thing, it's drums that tend to be fantastic in a huge dense mix sound really ridiculous on their own because they have a mission to be full of life and full of punch to the degree that it would cut through a huge, huge layer of dense material. So obviously it'd have to deliver a little more than would sound good on its own. So I'm gonna try sending the kick to the parallel compression as well. So another thing I can do is just revisit the contact mixer itself and see if uh, messing with some levels there might achieve some cool things. So I might just take a little bit and just, uh, oops, and just mess around with some of the different settings I already have, and then we'll just stop there. This is basically my approach to how I do things. Uh, I'm really enjoying these samples a lot. I'd like to thank Get Good Drums for just creating a pack like this with such beautifully tuned, amazing sounding drums. Honestly, it's, it's really a lifesaver to have people out there like that. So I figured I could uh, go through these different settings you can have here, these different options. For instance, the snare drum. You can change the tuning of the drum, which I think is pretty cool. Right now I'm on the medium, which I love, but all these are great in their own way. So I'm going to let that load up. Then we can go the high one. And then we got the 13-inch uh, one. And the BSFD, which I'm assuming means, oh, I thought it meant big fat snare drum. Never mind. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, it's definitely got that ballad snare type of sound going on. Kick, we got the two different choices. I'm using the 22 by 16, but let's try out the 20.
really subtle, but you can hear it, especially in the low end. And uh, yeah, all sorts of different cymbals. I love that you can click it right on there. That's great. And the toms, you got the head choices. Clear, I like personally, but we can give the coda to try, see how that sounds. Again, it's very subtle in the attack, especially I hear it, but that's the thing. You have the freedom to, to do these little specific things and make your own drum mix unique and special. So really from there, it's just uh, a matter of messing with the instruments that are going with it. Little tweaks here and there just to make it fit with your mix specifically, and there you go. That's basically the intro course to making big rock and metal drums. I hope this was helpful for all you guys. If you like these drum samples, go to getgooddrums.com. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section and I'll get right to it as soon as possible.